Good morning. Good morning everyone. Welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and I'm here this morning to attempt, she says, <laughs> a painting demonstration. We're going to have a go at painting some patchwork rose cutter. So I'm sure some of you will be familiar with this because it's, uh, it's not a new cutter but we're going to have a go at painting it and turning it into a nice 3D rose because it's not easy trying to paint roses as we've tried to discover. I've tried to been, work out some classes to show you how to paint them but they are quite tricky so I think we're going to have to have a little bit of help here with this cutter um, but we can do a good job painting the rose so that's what we're going to have a go at doing this morning so um, I hope it's not raining and horrid where it is here at the moment I'm looking out the window and it looks horrendous so guess what it's the ideal weather to do some painting indoors or anything like that so you're going to see across the bottom of the screen at the moment that is my brand new cake school online website that opened this morning or yesterday morning I should say. So if anybody would like to go and have a look at the online cake painting courses, they are now all in one place. They're all on the website tracymancakeschool.co.uk. So um, I do teach cake painting, as lots of you know. I can see lots of your names coming up, people that I'm familiar with. Um, but I also teach royal icing as well, and there is a royal icing course on there. So if you do want to pop over and have a look at my brand new spanking website, then there it is, tracymancakeschool.co.uk. Go and have a look. Good morning. Morning. Who can I see? I can see Nikki, I can see Elaine, I can see Leslie, Jean, who else can I see on here? Kathy. Yeah, you're all coming in. You're all tuning in. Perfect. That's what we want, isn't it? And Margaret, good morning. And Jackie, well, there's loads of you on this morning, isn't it? As it's raining and horrid. I don't want to go outside when it's like this. Not really. Um, so yesterday we did um we did royal icing yesterday. I did a royal icing live with my group yesterday. So we were practicing piping on a cake. So again, that's something else that we do on the cake school as well. We do lots of lives as well for people to join in, which is always good fun. Um, but all the lessons are pre-recorded mainly and you can watch them again and again. So you can sign up and join in and do as much as you like whenever you like. So more people coming in now. You are busy lot this morning. Morning, Barbara. Morning, Maureen. Morning Di, morning Margaret, oh there's loads of you. <laughs> no pressure, she says, looking at what she's going to be painting. It'll be fine, I'm sure. <laughs> probably winging it like usual but never mind don't forget to like and share somebody's written that for me which is very helpful because I normally forget so don't forget to like and share and um, we will go from there with your um, painting now I haven't done the invoices yet we've been um, fighting with um, the new system we're getting it sorted so don't worry anyone who's waiting for a royalized invoice from me it's coming just wait I'm, I'm on it <laughs> I'm on it, don't worry. So let's have a look at what we're going to do this morning. Let's take this down, but do please go and have a look at the new website. So we've still got Tracy's Cakes. We've still got Tracy, uh, tracyscakes.co.uk, um, but we now have a dedicated site purely for the online classes. So everything is there. It's much more obvious what we're doing, what we're selling and what um, is involved. So I hope it will make it a little bit easier for everybody um, to have a look at rather than um, trying to fight through the rest of the site amongst all the cupcake bouquets and everything else that I get up to. So we well, like my cake from Tuesday night, Breeder. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, it's still behind me, but it is actually off to the hospital shortly. It's going off to Stoke Mandeville Hospital, as is the Royal Ice Cake as well. So they're both going to new homes shortly so there you go that's where we're going <laughs> just learn how to comment yeah you got nice nice comments though Jackie <laughs> I'm reading all the things there yeah the weather's a bit changeable amongst the country today isn't it it sort of says it's going to rain I didn't think it was going to rain today I have to say but it has been raining all morning here so um but well, maybe it might change this afternoon we'll see anyway it's a great excuse to stay inside watch a live on sugar and crumbs and for me to show you how to do some cake painting so you can't really argue with that can we so let's have a look at what we're going to do this morning let's turn the camera down so we can see so I've got here a five inch round sugar pasted plaque now I only literally covered this about five minutes ago um so it's very soft so I'm literally going to show you that we're going to imprint on it using one of these patchwork cutters which I've got next to me and then we're going to paint it straight away so hopefully that will also um, put to bed anybody that's saying um, do I need to wait for it to dry the main reason we wait for it to dry 
is because um, if you're transferring images, um, sometimes you can end up denting it. So if you're just doing a straightforward paint where your, your hands aren't actually touching your sugar paste, then you can get on with it straight away. So I've got one of these this morning. Now this is a patchwork cutter, which I'm probably certain Carol has on her website. Um, and this is a rose one. It's quite a pretty rose. So I thought, well, we'll give this a go this morning. So what you need to do is while your sugar paste is still soft is take hold of your patchwork cutter. And we're just going to pop it on like that. And I'm just going to press it down so it marks the whole thing. I'm just going to go over it to make sure I don't miss any bits. But I don't want to press it down so deep that we can't actually, um, you know, the paint's running into everything. Now right, let's have a little look, see what we've done. Okay, I'm going to go back in again to make it a little bit deep on one side. When you put it back on again, you can kind of feel it almost slot into place. It's quite good, these, actually. There we go. A little bit more on that other side. I'm being obviously uber cautious this morning, more than I need to. I'm going to press a bit more down there. There we go, magic. I just wanted to get the veins there on those particular leaves. Might not be the easiest thing to say at this stage. However, um, you will see as I paint along. Oh, good morning, Tracy. I've just seen her name come up. <laughs> oh, no, you haven't thrown out your patchwork cutters, Breedy. You can't do that. I mean, I've got boxes and boxes of them. And every so often I bring them out. And they're really good for painting practice, actually. So they can. I mean, the idea behind patchwork cutters was to cut out individual little bits of um, paste and things to, to, to make these pictures but actually they're great embossers um i think i've used one on here before i can't remember which one it was now oh it was the fantasy flowers wasn't it um and they're quite good for painting i find they're all right so cocoa butter painting is what i teach most of you know that already but i will run it through quickly for anybody who's not watched before so cocoa butter is a solid product that's what it looks like there's little um buttons of cocoa butter and then what we do is we need to heat them up in order to be able to paint with them so i use one of these i don't know how i've managed to get halfway down the table here i'm just moving my chair um i use one of these which is a chrome food warmer you don't necessarily have to have one of these a, bo a bowl of boiling water will do the same job it just means that every 20 minutes you are going to need to um reboil your kettle to keep the heat there whereas this is a candle that stays lit although mine is running down a bit, but that's fine. And then I'm going to put a metal paint palette on top. Now this gets really hot um, because it gets really, really hot and the heat's coming up all the time. It melts the cocoa butter. So I'm going to just put on there like so. Won't need very much and that will melt and that will be what we're going to be used to painting on, okay? So we're going to have a look at what we're going to mix that with. So we're going to mix it with some dusting colours. So um, we're going to use woodland green, which is one of my favourite colours and we're going to be using red as well and white they've got oh my god I've got a lot of white left in there I have to go and jump across the room and get another white in a minute um, and white as well so anything that's like um, so any dusting colours luster colours it doesn't matter what the brand is it doesn't matter at all as long as it's a dust and it's nothing to do with um, uh, pastes or gels for this you are looking solely at dusts okay so we're going to use red woodland green and white and I'm just going to move my plaque out of the way because I literally can guarantee that I will end up um, there we go I will end up putting the um, all over my plaque before I've even started stick some white over there might have to get some more white later let's see how we go try not to this is the one color you're going to go through loads of if you do um cake painting because um, white um is very very common in every i use white in every project every single one and black although there's no black in this one today so that's okay so just three colors today those of you that have got um i do a little kit uh, those of you who've got the kit you've got the gear you don't need anything else those are the straightforward colors that you're going to be using today so nothing too unusual let's bring that back in and then also I have paint brushes which have numbers on them and that helps me to keep track of what you're doing so today I'm using paintbrush zero I'm using paintbrush number two and paintbrush number three now I've actually already done a trial run on this um, rose about an hour half an hour ago so I've just about got the pitfalls with it however <laughs> Who knows? You can see what happens. <laughs> see what goes on. OK, let me just read this comment. I read on the group you can use coconut oil. Coconut oil um, does not behave the same way as cocoa butter. Um, but you're going to ask me what it does. The answer to that question is I'm not 100 percent sure, but somebody did try it and they said, no, it wasn't the same. So coconut oil is not the same as cocoa butter. 
all right so just be aware of that somebody was trying to get it abroad um, and I think the only thing they could get was the coconut oil so that's what they used instead but it wasn't quite the same and I don't know what the the answer to that question is so um, have a look but let's have a go at doing this see how we get on so we're going to go for using our red but we're obviously going to um, I always say melt it down, lighten it up. What am I on? So paintbrush number two, we're going to dip that into the cocoa butter and we're going to pick up a little bit of red, just a tiny little bit there. A bit more actually. So we're going to start with the darkest colour and then we're going to just pick up a little bit of white. So not a lot, just a little bit because we're going to start with the darkest colour in the middle. I don't want to make it too dark. Because even though we're using red, actually, we're going to end up with more of a sort of salmon -y pink colour. Now, you will be able to see this better as I start painting because I'm well aware that you won't be able to see um, this particularly well because it's on white. I did try it on blue, actually, but I didn't really like it on blue. But so as I paint this, it will it will get um, more obvious to you. So all I'm going to do to start with is just paint this bit in the middle. Now, it is a little bit like painting my numbers with this. So you're going to see that um straight away there's guidelines so you're not trying to to create something that's not there it's there already there we go like so so what we're going to do we're going to do what did i do on the one i did earlier okay all right so i've made one already so the center bit on your um, rose is always going to be the darkest bit so what we're going to do now is very carefully we're going to increase slowly 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 with a little bit of white every time so I'm going to go back to my cocoa butter pick up a little bit of extra white go into my red on the side here and we're just going to start toning it through so you're going towards a salmon pink colour and then we're just going to paint the next few. Now you probably won't be able to see a huge amount of difference at this point. But when you get towards the end of this, you will be able to see quite a big difference. So we're going to do, I'm just going to start to pull out on these next layer of petals. Like so. You can use a smaller brush if you want. I've got brush two on today. Um, I found I could do it actually with brush two. It's a fairly big surface area. Brush one, I think, will take you a little bit longer. So I would go with brush two, I think, on this one. Now, you've got to be careful you don't backtrack and overpaint what you've just done with the darker colour. All right, because remember, this next colour is a little bit on the lighter side. So you don't want to be um, overpainting what you've done already because we're trying to graduate our colours out as we go. That's the plan anyway. So be careful you don't then go, oh, I've missed a bit and go back in. So you will need to keep the original colour on your palette and just kind of move it across as you go. All right. Now let's go around here. I'm just going to make sure I've got right down to the end here. I can see it now because it's just taking the paint onto the next petal. There we go. OK, so that is two shades. Now we're going to a third shade. So we'll dip that in again, pick up some more white, nip a little bit of the colour that was next to it. So we're creating a little sort of like row of colours here. So that's the first colour, second colour, third colour. All right. So we're not just destroying the first colour that we've got or the second. We're keeping them there as reference. And we're very slowly working our way out of this rose further and further out till we get to the outside edge. So all the petals are there, you're just gonna follow them along. And we'll just keep going. You don't need a huge amount of paint. This is a very low cost activity. The only thing you're gonna need is time. And um, we've got, hopefully got a bit of that at the moment to be able to sit and do a bit of painting. It's quite a nice winter hobby as well when it's outside and it's not very nice. You can sit indoors, do some painting. You soon, And it's very relaxing as well, actually. I quite look forward to Thursday mornings because I'm not leaping about like I normally am on Tuesday evenings. <laughs> I need to do a painting one, I think, on a Tuesday evening so I can have a sit down. <laughs> Right, so we've done sort of those ones there. I'm actually going to do this one over here as well because, um, am I going to do that one? No, I won't. I'm going to fade it out. Yes, I will. No, I will. I will do that one. Backtracking myself here. I will do this one because it's otherwise the contrast is going to be too big between those. 
so we will do that one the stand for the metal paint palette is not in the kit okay now that stand comes from amazon uh, carol doesn't have it and i don't have it and it's called a chrome food warmer and its purpose is not to do cocoa butter painting however um, it does work brilliantly and you only need one and they're roughly about 10 pounds i think sometimes if they're coming in from china you know amazon prime tells you it's next day and then it's not um, just keep an eye on that but they're roughly five to ten pounds and you as I say once you've had one that's it that's all you need and they're brilliant it just saves jumping up and down every five minutes just to get um you know hot water i know pump some people do but i don't want to particularly and once i'm in the zone i prefer to just keep painting myself it does make the paint pal palette very hot though you have to be careful um because if you touch this it does get really really hot um i'm just going to paint that one as well while i'm here then i'm going to change my color again so there we go so you can see it's a little bit darker in the middle and it's coming out again we will go be going back and doing more to it so again into the cocoa butter pick up some more white and then mix into the color you've got already you'll actually have the color on your brush if i turn that round now can you see we've got four different shades going on now all from the same color all from red okay red makes quite a nice salmon pink color all right, so just add some white to it and get quite a nice salmony pink colour. Coverage on this is really good. Cocoa butter behaves like acrylic, which means that you can build layers. So if you want to shade it, which we will be doing, um, you can do that once it's dry. And it does dry very quickly. The only time it doesn't dry is if, it's, if it gets hot, um, which is something that mainly happens in the summer. Uh, you can get round it still. There we go. Like so. <laughs> I'm reading your comments, some of you. <laughs> right, let's go up here. So we want shading, but we don't want it to be sort of too drastic. So, you know, we want the rose to... You know what this rose is like, it's darker in the middle and then it gets lighter towards the outside edge. So we're kind of replicating that really. So if you do sugar flowers, you're going to kind of know that already. So what we're doing is just trying to do that with cocoa butter. And we'll go here as well on this one. Because we're going to come back and shade it, we're going to let it dry first before we do any of that. It's quite a nice um, generic pattern, this one, this rose one from Patchwork Cutters. Um, again you can use it on anything can't you birthdays anniversaries paint the rose up a different color um, I've got a feeling in the pack there's some different sizes as well which is quite nice so you can use some different size roses couldn't find the pack I could only find that one and uh, to be honest with you I've had it so many years it's unbelievable right <laughs> okay so that's that one lovely definition absolutely it's looking great already now we have actually got a rosebud over here so don't forget about that so i'm just going to go back to my third color and i'm just going to take that and just fill that in as well because i finished the rose earlier and then went oh i've got that bit so i had to go back and do it so i'm going to remember to do this now before i forget and i've changed my color on my brush there we go so that's the little rosebud there on as well so we're going to leave that to dry what we're going to do apart from me throwing water all over the table just then which you can't see out of shot <laughs> we're going to get the kitchen roll that i have now need a new piece it's, it's all covered in water and we're going to take hold of the cocoa butter we're going to dip our brush in and we're going to very carefully just clean our brush Now, I've just read somebody's comment about cocoa butter. Unfortunately, if you do get it on your sugar paste, it, you can you cannot remove it. it. It will be on there. If you try and move it, it will smudge it. Um, it is quite a difficult product to get off completely. So the key to it is having the right size brushes. So if you've got good brushes um, that are nice and um, detailed, because we have brushes here that we do zero, one, two, and three, 
Um, all those two brushes are stuck in Ireland at the moment. The zero brushes and zero zeros as well are also stuck in Ireland, um, but we're hoping to get them shortly because of um, customs. Uh, but having nice brushes for the right size will help you because if you're trying to use something or write something very thin, then you might find that you're just using the wrong size brush. So just have a really good look at the brush that you're um, using. And you'll probably find that if you just change it slightly, that will make it a lot, lot um, better. I'm blending with my tablecloth. See, that was deliberate, Roxy. You see, I had that planned. <laughs> Absolutely nothing I do is planned, I can assure you. So <laughs> I described that as a fluke. Right, OK, so let's turn this round and we're going to go for Woodland Green, which is one of my favourite colours. I think it's a great colour. We're going to dip the brush into the cocoa butter and pick up some Woodland Green. But it's too strong in its neat form, so we're going to grab some white and we're going to mix that in and we're going to tone it right down or lighten it up. Yep, side of a wedding cake, anything like that. So we've lightened up that Woodland Green. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start painting the leaves. So again, these are all marked out for you. So brush two, I'm still using brush two. because Brush two's got a point on it and I can get to it, but it is quite large surface area still. Brush one, I think, is just going to take too long. But, you know, if you prefer to use a thinner brush and take your time, then, yeah, go for it. So all we're going to do is get a layer down first. So we can see, you can always turn it round as well. You don't have to stick with it in the same position if you feel your brush isn't quite getting into the markings you've got. Turn it round to help you so you can see where you're going. Hopefully this is now showing up really nicely on camera because um, I'm adding colour, which should be good. That will help you see what's going on. And me. <laughs> This is a practice piece. Somebody's just said, oh, you know, have have a practice. This is a, literally a, a cake board that I put some sugar paste on. And do you know what? If it was successful, then I could put it on a cake, couldn't I? I could just go, yeah, I'm going to use that and put it on a cake. Likewise, if it's a disaster, you can literally scrape the sugar paste off and then recover it and have another go. So nothing lost. And it's a little tiny board. It's only five inches. It's very small, this board. So it's just about right for a little bit of practice for an hour. And bear in mind, I mean, on Thursdays, I'm normally live for about an hour and I'll usually finish all the projects. So everything I try and do on a Thursday is something small that you can just have a go at. Um, just try and see if you can get, trying to get people to pick up a paintbrush. That's my number one thing, or a piping bag at the moment. If I can get you to pick up a paintbrush, then I'm going to bet you that you're going to love it because it is one of the most loveliest things ever. And when I first came on Sugar and Crumbs, I'm coming up for nearly a year now, um, I don't think anybody was painting on here at all. And I've now got so many students that love it and didn't realise they could paint. And you don't need to be able to draw. I have to say, I'm not the best drawer at all, but I can paint. Um, but I can teach you how to paint and I can give you guidelines and drawings to help you. Lots of templates to help you get round the basics of drawing. So you don't need to worry. There are a few, um, a few lessons that we do without templates. And then when those students realise what they've signed up for, they're panicking. <laughs> she says with her evil laugh, no, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. And even they will tell you it's fine. It is fine. I'm reading now about the PME. Well, I'm good. I'm glad you're enjoying the um, Royal Icing course. My Royal Icers, they have got a little bonus lesson coming this week. I don't know yet. Well, I did mention it to the group yesterday. Um, but they are getting an extra lesson this week. I'm filming it now. So they're getting a bit of an extra. Stay tuned, Royal Ices. Get board, cake boards, you can get these from Sugar and Crumbs. I'm sure Carol's probably got some on her site on Sugar and Crumbs. Just little round cake boards, five, six inches. Get a few, get them in stock and then a bit of sugar paste and you're up and running. That's all you need. Don't need anything else apart from your paintbrushes, obviously, and your cocoa butter. Right, where's this one in the middle? I'm having a job to see this one. Another one there. 
what I've discovered since I've been coming on here on Thursday mornings is that actually, um, if I look back at all the equipment I've got, and believe you me, I've got some equipment because I've been doing this for, oh my goodness, I worked it out the other day, it's horrendous, um, 30, 32, is it 32 years? It must be more than that now. I think it's more, might be 38 now, 38, what my 50, 12, yeah, 38 years I've been cake decorating, oh my goodness, I started when I was 12. So um, I've been doing this an awful long time. So I've got every conceivable cutter you can imagine in, under the sun. I was just rummaging through what I've got and thought, hmm, that works quite well. Let's give that a go. It's amazing how things, this is why I never throw anything out. I'm terrible. You know, I've got so much cake equipment, but I don't throw anything out because I suddenly think, oh, do you know what? I reckon you could do that with it. And then I start thinking, oh, then the possibilities start, you see. So I'm just painting in this stem here, which you could actually do in brown if you wanted to, but just for the sake of the live, I'm just going to do it in green. Just keep it simple. There we go. Brown we go. Uh, cocoa butter you can find um, on my website, traceskakes.co.uk, and you can find it on Sugar and Crumbs as well. There's two places. Right, where are we? You won't get it in the supermarket, that's what I'm telling you. You won't be able to find it in there. Right, hold on, I've got to work out where I am now with this. Oh, it's that way around, because the light's shining on it for me. <laughs> I've got to see where I'm going. Okay, there we go. I'll put my light on so you you can all see. That doesn't mean I can see. <laughs> yeah, get those piping bags out, my Royal Isis, come on. Get that first lesson underway and the beginners, cocoa butter people, get those paint brushes out. Once they're out, they're out, leave them out. And it'll be great, you'll love it. Especially um, it's so quick and easy just to pick it up and have a go. A couple of hours of practice and you're there. Now we've got a calyx going on here, so we'll just pop that in like so. There we go. Pop that in. Another bit there. There we go. That looks nice, isn't it? I'm happy with that. And then there's a bit of a stem there somewhere. There it is. There's another bit in there. That's the bit I can't see. There we go. That's better. And then back to this two more leaves. So just bear in mind, for those of you that say you can't paint or draw, you do not need to be able to paint or draw. OK, it's really straightforward. And classes are, are from, I do obviously free demos on Thursdays, but also um, there are nice classes, five pounds for a class, right up to big classes where you can do animals and all sorts of advanced stuff. So and I've got a I've got a load of new courses coming out, not this week, uh, or maybe the end of the following week. I'm painting at the moment, so painting and moving websites all in the same week. So yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> I haven't actually slept for a week, but there we go. <laughs> get these things done but yes we've got some new classes coming but if you're thinking I would love to do this I don't know where to start there is a beginners cocoa butter cake painting course which loads of you have done and um, I'm sure those of you that have joined we've had a little flurry of people joining recently with um, cocoa butter painting I think it might have been something to do with the live on Tuesday night because I don't normally do painting on Tuesday night, but I might have to do one, I think, next week, maybe. There we go. OK, right. That's it painted. So we could go right. There you go. That's done. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to do some shading on it to improve it and make it look even better than it already is. OK, so that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to take hold of my paintbrush and dip it into the cocoa butter and just get the green off because we're going to go back to the pink. Somebody just asked a question about Royal Ice Biscuits. There is a whole section 
on the Royal Ice course, which contains um, Royal Ice biscuits. Yes, there is. And there's about, how many did I do in the end? About eight, I think, something like that. There's heart, butterflies, teddy, all sorts on there. So there is a whole section on it, yes. There we go. So, yeah, it's anything to do with royal icing, basically. So there is biscuits in there and then there's loads of piping, loads and loads of piping. And it's it's going really well. They're doing really, really well, the group. OK, so we've done that bit. Now let's look, go back to the beginning of the rose. And I'm going to bring in here paintbrush number three, which is my dry brush. This is a great one for... Um, blending so I'm not going to put it into the cocoa butter I'm going to keep it dry it's actually got a bit of pink on the end because I was doing a practice run earlier and what I'm going to do I'm going back to my colors and we're going to dip it into the cocoa butter so I'm still using brush two at the moment I'm going to go into that first color again and just pick up a little bit more red actually just to make it a little bit darker now in this middle bit here it's highly unlikely you're going to be able to actually do um, a lot of um, shading because it's quite dark anyway so we're just going to literally just dab a little bit of color in there and i'll just take my dry brush and just press it down what i'm kind of going to try and do is get some of the stronger color into some of these ridges that are on this cutter because that will make it stand out even more and what i'm using my dry brush for is just sort of a blending to stop it becoming too harsh so i'm just going to bring that across like so just tapping it down and using it that way. So we're just going to work on the middle for a second. So you've got the lines there. One of the hardest things to paint is a rose. It's so difficult. I have tried many different ways to kind of work out how to teach it. And um, it's really difficult. Right, now what we're going to do is look at some of the shading. So we're just going to go down a little bit of a colour. I'm just going to kind of mix these two together really and see how we get on. And then what we're going to do is take some cocoa butter. I'm just going to dab it across here like so and take my dry brush and I'm just going to pull that colour into the petal there. And I'm going to do the same here now. Let's just come across here on that line. Again, just drag it out. Now we don't want to cover it. We're not trying to cover it here. Okay, That's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to add some shading. So I'm just going to go along the line and just pull that back like so. It actually ends up looking a little bit like um, leaf vein anyway. So let's go along here. So once we've done that, we're going to get our darker colour and go into these veined lines as well, which would definitely will make it stand out. And you'll be really surprised actually how much difference that makes. So we're just coming across here, just blending this colour through. Is it starting to look different? I hope so. There we go. So I'm still using the slightly stronger colour at the moment. You don't want to put down too much because these surface areas are not very big. This one is, this one's huge, but some of them are not. And what you don't want to do is end up covering the whole thing. So you can do that one there, like so. What we really want to do is capture this at the bottom here because this is the petal going up. So we need it here as well. So we'll just curve that round. So we actually want more colour at the bottom of this one than the top. So more darker colour there. Okay, you see that goes up there. So that's the top of the petal, that's the bottom. All right, we'll carry on down here. Let's turn that round. So this is a patchwork cutter. Um, I'm going to think Carol's probably got it on her site. I don't have it, I'm afraid, but I would imagine Carol has it on Sugar and Crumbs. All right, let's come down this way. Take that out there. But it's pretty. It's a very old cutter. Um, I'm sure they do still exist. I'm sure of that. Get any cocoa butter bits coming up. There we go. Right, let's go around this side. Let's come along here. Pull that 
out. So we're still staying on sort of quite a dark scale at the moment. We're not doing anything sort of strange, but we're going to get even darker. Let's do that one there. So, so we're not putting down too much, okay? Just be careful. Let's go around to this top bit here. Keep turning it around. Oh, I'm nearly off the screen, aren't I? Do you think I was a long way away from myself? <laughs> oh, what am I doing? So I'm so busy painting, I forget to look at the camera every so often, which I should do, really. There we go. All right, so we've done... We've gone over the whole thing with a bit of a shade, but we're going to come back and do more. But what we're going to do as well, don't forget, you've also got this one over here. So we're just going to put a little bit down there and just pull that through. So it's not flat. Like so. So we're going to leave that to dry again. Let me just put one more little bit in there and we'll come back to that again once more. You can just paint. There's nothing wrong with just putting down a bit of paint but you can do so much more by just adding more than one layer. And that is why cocoa butter is so brilliant, okay? That's why we go on about cocoa butter all the time. So let's dip that brush into the cocoa butter again and just clean it all up. So all the videos I do, I normally put them on YouTube afterwards, but I am a little bit behind at the moment. I've got four to put up. I've got, I've been very wrapped up this week in my new website. So it's, um, it's made me delayed with quite a few things this week but I will do it so let's put a few extra cocoa butter in there so if you want to go over to my youtube channel and subscribe it's at Tracy Man Cakes and you'll find it in there right okay so let's go this way we're going to do green again now so what we're going to do now is we're going to use darker green now so originally we used woodland green with white we're now going to use um, just woodland green on its own so we're getting a bit of darker shading going on here. All right. So say, I think in this particular kit, um, not off the top of my head, but I've got a feeling there's different size roses in here. So let's start, oh, let's just start here. So we'll just put a little bit of darker color down here. Just tap that color in. And then we're just gonna take my brush and just pull that through. This will change it dramatically. It always does. The leaves always change it dramatically. So let's give that a go. I think the, the thing is with painting, people think one layer and then they stop. But actually, there's so much more you can do to make it just look amazing. And it's not overly complicated. So you just got to have a go see how you do it okay all right we'll go this way so i've been putting all my um sugar and crumbs demos on youtube um but obviously there's lots of cake classes on the new site which i'm very happy with which is open this week to try and make it a little bit more easier for people to gives me a chance as well to talk more about the classes rather than getting confused with everything else that's on there. So my other site's still open with all the bits and pieces on it, but there is a dedicated school page now. Right, okay. This is a metal paint palette, that's what it's called. Yeah, let's put some more down there. Just blending that away, add a bit more in. If it gets a bit watery, in other words, you're not getting very good coverage. You've probably got too much cocoa butter in, uh, in there, so you just need to go back and just add a bit more dust. Let's turn that around again. Bit more in there. But it doesn't take long to take something that's quite sort of basic looking to another level basically so oh Nikki's put my address up for me well done I'm very happy with my new school <laughs> as you can you can hear me talking about it yeah 
very happy with it. Lots to come. Lots more to come. I've got 55 classes now. I didn't even realise until we put them onto the site just how many painting and royal icing classes there were now. There's 55 of them. I couldn't believe it. I've obviously been very busy this year. I mean, I'd already had a little bit of a bank of classes before I started on um, sugar and crumbs, but it's gone wild since. So there's a lot to choose from. There we go. Around here. Hopefully you'll agree it's making a difference. I think it's making a difference. I'm looking at the camera, it looks like it is. Put it down a little bit again. And then don't forget the calyx as well, so just put a little bit on there. Just to just so it's not flat. Use your brush just to blend it up a little bit. Just be careful on this because it's quite thin. There we go. Okay, so that's where we've got to next. That's not looking too bad, is it? <laughs> right, let's carry on. So I'm going to dip my brush into the cocoa butter and just clean it for a second. You're hoping I'm going to pay you in chocolate? <laughs> Kelly's back Saturday, don't worry. But she's um, Charlotte's got to do the first hour and then Kelly will be in for the second hour. Uh, poor Kelly, she's exhausted. She's had to go back to work. <laughs> oh dear. Will you be having any more royal icing? Oh no, you can join royal icing now. I mean, there's there's no time limit on it. it. You just join in. It's not just started and then nobody else can join in. You can join in straight away. I mean, it, the course material was only released uh, 3rd of February. But, oh no, it's it's running continuously. All the courses are running continuously. So don't think that the start, there's the only time on the website you'll see any dates is because it's a live for any particular reason. So if you see it listed as a live, then there's a date on it. And that just means you're painting along with me on Facebook. Um, but if it's not a live, then, you know, you can just follow, you can just do it straight away. So yeah, if you want to join Royal Icing, please do, because it's, um, they're doing really well really well right okay looking good so far like let's add some detail now so we've gone to the zero brush and we're going to pick up a bit of red and we'll just mix it in with what we've got here and we're going to kind of go into some of these lines we've got here so but we are going to use our dry brush as well because we definitely do not want them to start making this look stripy that's the last thing we want on this but we are going to use the brush put some extra lines in you just have to follow it I mean honestly it couldn't be any easier I don't think it's just making sure how you apply your paint doesn't um, you know is not too much so just follow along basically put that in there and I'll just drag that up a little bit but if you want to paint a rose on a cake this is by far the easiest method by far I've got a bit of green on my rose that's annoying me. Right, not a lot, but enough. Go down here as well. There we go. Sorry, I've got green coming off my brush. Let me get my thing and sort that out. Yeah, anyone who's got patchwork cutters, have a little look what you've got. You'd be surprised what's in there. And if you don't, they're not overly expensive to get. And look what you can do with them. I think it's just what I've done here is just giving you a new angle on them. Just giving you something else to think about, really. Right, where's my brush? Which one was that? That's three. Yeah, don't dismiss what's in your kit. Always have a good look at it. Even simple shapes and things. There's all sorts you can do with things. I've been... Um, ransacking my kits to see what I've got and see what I can do live and I know some of you haven't been doing it as long as me but that's all right we can get you there so yeah if you do want to join any classes on royal icing or um painting 
it is going all the time so just don't worry about you know or oh, is it started yeah they i mean the beginners cocoa butter class has been running now goodness me uh gosh nearly a year i think and students are joining it every day or every week so it's very busy that class and royal icing has been very very busy so you're very welcome and i will help you if you get stuck so you're not just left on your own and actually the rest of the students are very helpful too so everybody seems to help which is good that's what we want isn't it I don't want to feel like they're left and don't know what they're doing. So we'll come around here. There you go, the outlining's coming out now, isn't it? You can see that. I seem to be going through a flower phase at the moment. I did flowers, didn't I, on Tuesday? I think maybe because it's um, Mothering Sunday's approaching and I've started to go into flower mode I've gone in without realizing <laughs> okay, so the zero brush is picking up the detail the three brush is doing the blending I need to put it in the green then and the two brush is what we used to get the, the paint down in the first place But give it a go. It is a really lovely thing to do. And you know, you don't have to make a cake every time, so you can just do a bit of sugar paste. And you can keep these plaques as well. I'm always saying to people, you know, when you've done your plaque, keep hold of it. And then if someone suddenly announces, oh, can you make a birthday cake at the weekend? Cool, look what you've got in the cupboard you can use. Lovely. Pop that on the cake some royal icing around it, pipe around the border and I tell you what as well, if they want to then keep it because they won't want to cut into it, you can um, they can lift it off and keep it. So it's a really nice thing to do. So if anybody's thinking of doing anything like Mother's Day typey things nearer the time, then you know you can always get ahead and do this ready if time's short. Perhaps you've got a shift at work to do or something that's not helping you planning i always think with cake decorating the more you can get done in advance the more enjoyable it is because it's not fun when you've finished your cake you just iced your cake now you're looking around and you've not made any decorations you think oh no this is going to take forever so i always try and make as much as i can in advance models all sorts of things just get them done and then when you put it together it comes together quite quickly then and you've enjoyed it then because you've spent a bit of extra time painting or modelling or whatever it is you're doing rather than trying to sort of fit it all in on the day you've made the cake. I've seen a few people do that and it's a shame because to be honest with you if you've um you know baking the cake is you know you're all enthusiastic it's going to go well and then you know you decorate your cake's all gone well oh, and then you're starting to get tired and that's the best bit is all the decorating for me anyway it is so I personally would leave it to a following day and then do it or we'll have the bits ready there we go look at that that's coming along all right isn't it how about that that's coming on okay we can see what's going on can't we and now let's do this one we won't forget this so like so as well just follow the outlines again i'm not making anything up here it's all there for you i'm making a little bit up but it's minimal really to be honest okay look at that okay you can always darken the middle a little bit more if you want to just take it down a bit further but you can see the way it's kind of got lighter as it comes out and that's what you want really. The last thing you want to do is paint the whole thing one colour because that's wrong. You need to start darker in the middle and get lighter and lighter and lighter as it comes out. So that's what you're aiming for here. I'm just going to put a bit more colour down here because that needs a bit more. 
when I look up at the camera, I can see what's going on then, you see. I can then see what it needs. So it needs a bit more. Let me just blend that through on that one there. That's better. Okay, so now we're going to change colour again. And this time we're going to just have a look at the veins that are on the leaves, which we can actually see because, again, they're all marked on. So we're not making anything up. We're going to go into the woodland green, go into the dark woodland green with paintbrush zero. So again, good quality brushes, make sure they're the right size for the job. It's going to be very difficult to do anything if it's the wrong size. So let's bring that down here. A bit more cocoa butter on there, isn't it? I love movement. And cocoa butter does dry, as I said earlier, very quickly. Um, it dries normally sort of um, one to two minutes. It is really quick. Now, if you don't want those to stand out too much, you can always take hold of your brush and just very gently pat it down. It seems to take the sharpness out of the paint. So if it's coming out too sharp, just do that. And that improves it massively. I'm just going to put a little bit of extra dark around there. Because I'm getting fussy in my old age now. Right. And there. You don't have to do the um, veins if you don't want to. You can leave it as is, but they're there, so let's use them. I'll pick this up at the end and I will also put a picture on my Instagram and on Sugar and Crumbs community page so you can see it because sometimes it's not so easy to see it on camera so I will put them up for you to see so if you can't quite see what I'm doing at the moment then it will become apparent hopefully there we go and down here nice not to have to think and paint this is a it's very painting by numbers this all you've got to worry about is a little bit of shading that's the main thing but everything else is there for you so cocoa butter decent brushes dusting colors a little bit of sugar paste a couple of boards metal paint palette is ideal something like that and then you're up and running and then what we'll do here so that's all the leaves done what we'll do here is we'll just take our color and we'll put a little darker line just underneath the stem there and across here again just so that's not flat so we're creating a bit of a shadow there you see and a little bit more dark at the bottom there <laughs> we like we like There we go. How about that? That didn't take too long, did it? That's all finished. So all of that from that. What do you reckon? <laughs> there you go. Put it around that way. Really easy, really straightforward, not difficult to do. I'm going to just hold it up so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. There we go. How about that? That gives you all the detail then, doesn't it? So say so I will take a picture um on instagram i'll put it on instagram so you can see it and on the um cake community page of sugar and crumbs as well and on my social media tracy man cakes that's facebook and instagram i will put it on there as well so you can see it, it is pretty isn't it and it's not too difficult to do you're not gonna find this too challenging it's all there for you you've just got to follow along all the little um marks that are on there but it is pretty it's a nice simple project and again very lifelike when you paint it the way I've painted it it um, can be very flat if you literally just paint it and don't do any shading so what you need to do is you need to learn how to do some shading with it and just follow it um, but it is it's just enough you don't need to go mad and weirdly with these as well what I've said in the past is that it's if you actually take a photograph of your finished item or I'm looking at it now on camera you can then actually see where where you're going with this because painting a rose is difficult it, you look at it and you go I can't quite see what that bit is so if you um, take a photo of what you've done and have another look at it then you will be able to see exactly where it is that you're going 
with a paint like this because um, I can now quite clearly see on the camera exactly what it is that's going on here so there you go but I will take a photograph shortly but you can do it in any colour can't you any colour at all you can do whatever you like so let me just change the screens over there I am <laughs> I'm still here uh, so yes if you want to have find out more information about the cake painting classes then the website address is up there now tracymancakeschool.co.uk which is my brand new website less than a couple of days old and you're really welcome to go over there and have a look at all the things that um, I've got on there also you can follow me on Instagram let's put that up as well there we are that's Instagram tracymancakes my YouTube channel is also the same Tracy Man Cakes, as is Facebook as well. So I'm on all of those. So I will, once I've finished um, this, be getting this onto um, YouTube later today, but you will be able to watch it back on Sugar and Crumbs as well. Let me pick this up so you get a bit more sort of idea of size. There we go. Now go that way. I always go the reverse. It, it shows me in reverse. <laughs> it's so annoying. So there you go. That's what it looks like. It's really pretty and straightforward and Painting a rose is difficult. No, I need to go that way, don't I? Painting a rose can be tricky, but this is a really lovely, easy way to do it. So hopefully give it a go. If you need any help, as I say, there's my website address there, Tracy Man Cake School. Come over, join us. Let's get painting. Let's get piping royal icing together and um, move your skills forward so that when... Um, everybody's demanding cakes you're going to be going paint a rose yeah i know how to do that no problem <laughs> right so i will be back on tuesday evening at half past six on sugar and crumbs i have no idea what i'm doing yet but i'm sure i'll think of something so i will be back then and also thursday next week at half past 11 so have a lovely day everyone um get your paint brushes out get your piping bags out and um get going this afternoon and see what you can come up with and then you can show me you can put it on the Facebook groups and I will have a look. So I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.